afternoon, South Africa. I'm Bonnie Bully. Welcome to Afternoon Express. It's the brand new start to the week, and it's the last week of summer. Uh, winter's around the corner, and today we're joined by the founder of a fast-growing online community called Sleek Geek, which connects people and provides support for a healthy lifestyle and losing weight. We also chat to Bernadine Douglas, the author of a book called The Banting Solution, and we're joined by weight loss consultant and blogger Zinklen Chikilia, who's going to share her personal transformation journey with us. And remember to answer our question for today. We want to know, have you tried banting? Do you think it works? Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using our hashtag Afternoon Express. Comment on our Facebook page. And finally, today is the start of week two of Winner Home and Afternoon Express. We've met our design contestants, their mentors, and our three judges. This week is all about inspiring our design contestants and you at home with advice from some of the top industry professionals. So today we take a look at what went down at South Africa's premier design and decor expo, Decorex a few weeks back. Jeannie's in the kitchen. Thanks, Bunny. Hello, South Africa, and welcome to a brand new week. Now, this is my absolute worst. When it's a Monday and you don't know what to wear, so you try everything in your wardrobe, and then nothing really fits, so then you get depressed, and then you realize that it's full moon as well, which isn't actually a very good idea for a woman. Yeah. So thank goodness we are not using carbs in this kitchen today because I don't think I can hold <laughs> I can't hold it together if we do. But I saw your eyeball in the cheese. You see, this is now my weakness. Cheese. Cheese. Any, any cheese. <laughs> any time of the day. Every day. All day. All day. <laughs> okay, we're going to be making a soup, but no carbs. No carbs. Clem, you love a carb. Let's see. Wait, no, really. <laughs> no carbs, no. Okay, good. And then cheese. And we're not cheese. sacrificing flavor at all. Okay. And I'm just giving you extra cheese. <laughs> okay, yes. More cheese. Remember, you can cook with us too. All you need to do is visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. And a, a, a recipe is important. You've got to follow a recipe. Otherwise, it's not going to taste the same as what it does in here. <laughs> and, of course, our shopping list as well. I cannot wait for today. It's all about getting in shape. It's all about getting healthy. Thank you for joining us. Bonnie's on the couch with our very first guest. Thank you, Jeannie. Sleek Geek is an online social community of support and motivation for people keen to change to a healthy lifestyle and transform their bodies. It all started with one man, Ilan Lohman, whose passion for a healthier South Africa led him to quitting his job in an executive position to take on Sleek Geek full time. We're joined by Ilan, along with one of Sleek Geek's biggest success stories, Carol Kajana, who is the leader of one of the ladies' teams. Welcome to The Loft. Hi, Bonnie. It's great lovely to be here. To, yeah, Thank lovely you. to have you with lovely us. Such an you. inspiring story already. <laughs> So how did uh, the beginning of Sleek Geek Sleek Geek, well, about? actually, Sleek Geek was an accident. I was a corporate workaholic, 17 kilograms heavier, chain smoking, on the couch for so 20 years. So you were an accident about to happen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> At age 35, I decided, you know what, if I carry on on this trajectory, my life is not going to look anything like wow. I ever anticipated it to. Wow. So I made changes for myself. And then I challenged a few of my friends. I said, hey, we need to lose some weight. Let's all put 500 Rand in a kitty. Uh -huh. We'll see who loses the most weight in six weeks. And I thought, okay, well, let's talk to each other about strategies. So I created a Facebook group. And that Facebook group of me and my handful of friends has now become, we almost about hit 40,000 people in the last that three and a half incredible. years. Yeah, and it's just grown organically by word of mouth. Um, and it's just a daily support community. Each day, people discussing yeah. health and fitness. Yeah. Yeah, and so then I left my corporate job about a year later. I was in an executive Looking position. Looking fine. <laughs> and yeah, so that's, that was three years ago now. Oh, wow. I've been doing it full time ever since. What did your personal transformation look like? What are some of the, the goals that you reached in that time? Oof. Well, I mean, the main thing which I'm really proud about is that I managed to give up smoking because I thought that was, you know, something that was really a deterrent to my health. And just changing my habits in general, it's given me so much energy. You know, I think a lot of people are focused on weight loss, but, you know, just improving your quality of life. I used to have heartburn. Um, my libido was very low. You know, wow. I wasn't, I couldn't go and do active things and enjoy things like going out and doing a fun warrior race or something. Yeah. So my whole quality, so the weight is just incidental. Your confidence your quality of life improves. And I decided that I want to give people that message. Yeah. And so when I left corporate, I said, my goal in life is to inspire, and I even tattooed it on my arm, <laughs> is to inspire 100,000 people to live a healthier lifestyle and give them the tools to do that. Wow. And, and who can use Sleek Geek? And how, do, how does it like work every day practically? 
anybody can access Sleek Geek. What I do is I've got this model where we give away 99% of what we do for free because I don't want anything, I don't want people to have a barrier to gain information of how to be healthier. Mm. And um, so what we do is it's just a constant discussion. They, they can just come visit our website or the Facebook group, get involved. We have quarterly dinners in Joburg and in Cape Town. It's all about community and that's what Carol's done. I mean, Carol is the leader of our team, Asijiki, which is our Kosa speaking group. And we've just passed 15,000 members in there and it's growing That's like incredible. crazy. And Carol's the leader there. Yeah. And so it's all about community because I realize that we live in a society where it's hard to do things alone. And most times you're not supported in your journey. You know, your colleagues, your family, nobody believes in yeah. you. They think it's, ah, oh, it's just, oh, you're on diet again. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, so we thought, okay, now you've got all these people together, yeah. all supporting each other. They care about your achievements. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it awesome. Wow. So, Carol, you have an inspiring story of your own to tell, yes, your journey of transformation. I do. You lost 38 kilograms. 38. Yeah. How long did it take you? What inspired it? Take us through it. So, you know, when you know you have a problem, you'll be on Facebook wanting to check all the slim and the quick, slimming, fixes. quick fixes and whatever else. So I came across the geek and I just observed for 10 months trying to figure out what they are about. But then it clicked that actually I can now start. So I was ready. It's all about being ready being as ready, well. Yeah. Um, so I started with a reboot um, 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 support group. And then I lost my first 30 days, like 6.5. I felt much healthier, more energetic. I've got two kids that I needed to run around wow. and catch all around. So it was, it was, yeah, I'm now on 38 Ks down. That's incredible. exciting. And yeah. how long, how long was so that? So I'm now a year and six months. Wow. Yes. How important is it for people to understand that it's not just about losing weight, that it's a whole lifestyle change? Sure. And how do you know when you're ready to implement that kind of an intensive It's very change? important. So as, as Ilan said now, that actually I'm targeting the, the closer speaking group or mm -hmm. even the black market because our whole culture is based on carbs. And if you talk to them about carbs, it's such a big word. So you need to break it down in the language they understand. Oh, for a long time, in our culture, people say you look you look hot, you look sexy when you're when you're thicker. big. Like and yeah, yeah like I my, mean, my, are... like my mom will say yes. I um, mean, like no, you can't lose weight now. They will think that you're not unhappy in marriage. So a black woman's <laughs> supposed to be yeah, big. Yeah. 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 yeah, so we, we, we're breaking down that. We, we, we're taking ownership. Mm -hmm. We've been yeah. making a lot of black women much smaller. <laughs> <laughs> we've had so many amazing results. You're causing in a Carol's lot of trouble. Group. Yeah, in, yeah, in Carol's group, we've had so many amazing yeah. results and stories and before and afters. It's so inspirational. It is. Um, it's really, yeah. really fantastic. And what are the changes in, in the women's lives is this journey affecting? So, yeah, so it's more about healthy living. Yeah. So it's more, you're more energetic. You can wake up in the morning, go for a jog. You can take a skipping rope, skip at home. You don't even have to belong to a gym. You, the way you cook, you, how your cupboard looks, what's inside. Um, what are you feeding your family? So it, the whole, the new generation, I'm excited mm -hmm. because there will be more into clean eating. How do you eat clean? Yeah. So it's, it's really exciting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's changing lives, yeah. I must say. What are some of the tools that people actually use to motivate themselves to keep going? I mean, do you, is it important that you, you, you click into a group or... So, so, so what, what we found avenues? works really well is we run a lot of free challenges. And we've got one challenge called the Healthy Habit Challenge. Mm -hmm. So basically for each day, we say you're going to practice this one simple, easy to do habit. Because I think a lot of people are scared about something being too difficult or unattainable. So taking today, too long. today you're just going to yeah. eat slowly and mindfully, you know. Yeah. And people mm. don't realize, you know, you wolf your food down, you sit at your computer, you're on WhatsApp. You're not actually mm. concentrating. And, right. and that's a great way to overeat, um, all these kind of things. So just basic habits. And then we try and teach people, you know, because Carol touched on it's about health. It's not just about weight loss. Um, you know, how you eat, how you move. We're all sedentary, we sit at desks all day. Mm -hmm. How you think, it's your emotional state of being, and how you sleep, sleep is so important. Sure. So in those habits, we try and teach people the basic building blocks yeah. of habits. Yeah. But what's really powerful about the digital landscape is we allow people to do that together. So we'll have a start date and say, we're all starting this healthy habit challenge on Monday. You know, we had 17,000 people sign up for our last one in a week, and everyone did it wow. together. And then they were all posting in the group, oh, today 
this is, you know, today's task was to eat something green at dinner, you know. This was yeah. my dinner meal, you know. Um, yeah. Or the, the night that everyone wasn't allowed to look at their screen or their phone or whatever, an hour before bedtime, you had everyone the next day posting about it, and before they were like, oh, this is going to oh, be so wow. hard. So but back to the point that you're not alone. Mm. Yeah. And I think mm. that's the key is people doing it together yeah. is what's wow. power. Well, congratulations, and thank, thank you. you so much for joining us. Thank Thanks so much. So much. It's, it's a real honor to have been here. Sleek kick to see it Absolutely. Sure. Cool. After the break, we're joined by Bernadine Douglas, who authored a book called The Banting Solution, after herself undergoing a health transformation. And we get started on our celebration of soup with a classic roast tomato soup. Remember to answer our question for today. We want to know, have you tried banting? Do you think it works? Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using our hashtag Afternoon Express. Comment on our Facebook page. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, Bernadine Douglas is the founder of the Slender Slim For You Banting Clinics Group and the author of Banting Solution. Bernadine, an ardent advocate for banting, went through a pivotal lifestyle change herself, which saw her life quality improving, improving drastically. Now, th through this experience, she learned a few valuable lessons. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, what was that pivotal moment in your life when you decided, I need to be a banter? Late 2014, mm -hmm. after I've been consulting clients online through social media and teaching them how to band, I realized I was literally playing with my food, being a weak low carber and a weekend loafer, my weight just fluctuate. Then I would lose weight, then I would pick up weight. And I was still stuck with that extra 10 kilograms that I wanted to lose after my second uh, child's uh, birth weight. Yeah. And um, I just designed a 30-day meal plan challenge for myself and a couple of other ladies and we just hit it off in November 2014 and then I lost, within four months, I lost my 10 kilograms. Wow. But, but my, my main concern was that every time I would pick up weight, I would pick up weight around my midsection yeah. and that was your first indication of um, diet, insulin resistance and that was a concern to me. So oh, wow. I wanted to sort of prevent that of happening to me. I didn't want to be in a next person with high insulin resistance and then no. onto diabetes type 2. So I just decided I'm going to be 100% committed onto banting. I'm just going to follow it through completely 100% down to the yeah. ground. And like I said, four months, 10 kilograms down, joined the gym to tone and, and get fit. And um, I've been at goal weight since then. Amazing. Basically, yeah. Now, I think a lot of people have kind of think they have an understanding of what banting is. I mean, I'm not even entirely sure of the proper definition of it. I just think it's not eating carbs and eating high fat and protein. Is that it? You know, there's a lot <clears throat> of ideas around banting. Uh, people are fairly misled to think this is a a diet that is heavy high in fat, yeah. which it's not. Um, it's your ratio of fat in macronutrient value being highest, protein moderate and carbohydrate lowest. But it's a common myth to assume that people eliminate the entire food group on banting. We don't eliminate carbohydrates, yeah. we're just lowering it. So it's not a no-carb diet, it's a low-carb diet. But the fat, once again, um, the more body fat you have that's, that's stored fat, the less dietary fat you want to consume, but keeping yeah. to your ratio of high fat, low-carb. Okay, because my friend actually was huge in, into banting. Well, she said she was banting. She obviously wasn't banting properly mm. because she made, ate so much fat. There was cheese and everything. There was butter and everything. And I think at one point I even took her, saw her take a spoon <laughs> and like put it in her mouth filled with butter. And surely that can't be right. No. So the ratio's got to be right. No, that, that's the thing. If, if the bigger you are, the less dietary fat you want to eat because if you have enough stored fat for fuel, you want to be accessing that first. You want to okay. release those free fatty acids from your fat cells and be burning that for fuel. You don't, you don't, you don't want your body to be busy burning dietary fats. Okay. So there's enough fats in the foods you're going to eat. If you're going to have a fatty piece of meat and you, your little bit of fat that you use, like your butter to cook your foods in, your olive oil to drizzle on your salad, yeah. and the little bit of dairy that you're going to include, that is more than enough fat to go about. I, I can't emphasize how much people don't realize how quickly your fats, dietary fats, just add up on this lifestyle. You have really? to be very careful of not overdoing What fats. kind of fats? add up quickly that then become well, bad for you? Well, we, we do mostly saturated fats through our meats and our dairy sources okay. that we eat, but I've heard clients complaining, when, especially when I deal with clients in consultations, they will give me a, a two-day food diary and they will have for breakfast two eggs, four strips of bacon, a whole avo, and they will have some nuts. <laughs> that sounds <and> amazing. <laughs> it does. It sounds delicious and it is, but it's just really 
over the top. It's just, okay. it's just so too what much So what should we be then be eating for breakfast well, instead of that? I would say for a woman on a weight loss phase, yeah. two fried eggs, um, don't even go more than a tablespoon of butter when you fry because that's enough sure. fat. There's about 12 Well, already you're frying. Butter. So would you say, we'd recommend frying as opposed to poaching? Well, it's... Do you need that oil? It's personal choice. Okay. Look, when, when we want to get a fat in through our cooking methods, then obviously we're going to fry in the butter and, or fry yes. coconut oil or olive oil. Oh, yes. But poaching is a choice. And once again, keep in mind that if you take one large egg, it's five grams of net protein and six grams of net fat. So people think that an egg is just a protein, but it's yeah. equally just as much fat than protein. Oh, so, no, that's not so depressing. Because one egg is never going to fill me up in no, a million years. No. So if you, if you look at a... A fulfilling breakfast, you yeah. look at two eggs, you can have two strips of bacon. Uh, what I like to do occasionally is make a nice big omelette. So you can have your two yes. eggs and your filling could be like chicken strips with some feta cheese in there, but not a whole ring of feta cheese. It's like really just about balance. Okay. And I think that is where a lot of people are struggling on yeah. banting because they don't, they think, oh, it's a free for all, it's a fat exactly. free. Exactly. Feast. Exactly. You know, they think, not going to eat the bread, but I'm going to go and lo uh, load, load on the on cheese. The fat, and that's the first place they make the mistake and they pick up weight because okay. this is what we found in clinical practice is that they are just overdoing the fats completely. Yeah. And then, sorry, what was I going to say? Um, but then no carbs whatsoever. If you eat one carb, then you're destroying your whole ketosis system. No. <laughs> that's another <laughs> thing. With carbohydrates, you get two types of people. You get the person that's sensitive to carbohydrates. Yeah. Those are your profoundly insulin resistant person and your di uh, diabetic person. Then okay. you get a person that can tolerate carbohydrates. They don't have any of those. Okay. So if you're not sure whether which one you are, just stand sideways to the mirror. Look, if you've got a bulging tummy, you're most likely already insulin resistant and there's a way really? to test it, yeah. And then what does so, that mean, no sugar? Cut out sugar completely, okay. white and brown. I've heard people think that brown sugar is healthier, but not. And I would say go cold turkey mm -hmm. on um, sweetness as well, because okay. just sweetness also triggers a, a sugar craving, and sugar addiction is another issue in this country okay. as well. So Thank you so much for chatting to us. You are amazing. Yes. So much valuable information on the show today. I can't get enough of it. Today we are giving away a copy of The Banting Solution by Bernadine Douglas. To enter SMS the keyword books, your name and city, double <laughs> 3728. SMSs cost one round fifty each. T's and C's apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Cooking up something lovely and some tasty soup is Bunny in the Kitchen. Welcome back to your favorite kitchen on television. Today we're making winter appropriate stuff, right? It stuff is. that's gonna warm our hearts, warm up our bones. And your soul. Us... Yeah. Everything just happy. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we're Tomato talking... soup. But we're talking banting today. Banting. So there's certain methods of developing those sugars in fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. that you won't need to add additional sugar to. When it comes to tomato soup, and you've mentioned this before, you always have to add a little bit of sugar to balance always. out the tartness. Right, so what always. we're doing today, we're going to start on the tomatoes. Okay. Try and use the ripest tomatoes you can find. That way they've already got a bit of that natural sugar developed in them. And I feel them. These guys, maybe not the ripest. Yeah. Okay. So I saw them and I thought, mm, let me... <laughs> what you could also do is, if the tomatoes aren't that ripe, yeah. add a little bit of tomato paste just to develop that extra flavor in there. But I don't okay. want to use it today. And that's because of part two, when we're making our delicious little cheese biscuits, they don't want to make it too rich. You know? Yeah, of course. Okay. Cool. So when it comes to making soups or stews, you've got to work with the Holy Trinity. It's called the Murapois. Yeah, you've told me about this. We made it you when know. we made the bolognese. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's celery, carrots, and leeks. Or what uh. you do is, it would normally be your carrots, celery, and onion. Today, we're going to use leeks. leeks They're a little it? sweeter as well. Yes, they are. So yeah. I'm just going to whack them in there. I'm not going to even chunk that up. That just goes in there, just like that. <coughs> so celery in, carrots in. And the garlic goes in whole as well. And because the reason for that is, again, what happens is when garlic slowly cooks, it's inside its skin, it becomes super soft. soft. So like amazing. Just put that in like a cologne bottle. I'm just joking. Don't wow, do that. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's come back a little. Let's just come back. <laughs> so what happens is the garlic actually adds sweetness to the dish as well. No added sugar. Okay, lovely. So a little bit of olive oil. I'm not even going to do that now. A little bit of olive oil and then toss it all in there. And then we're going to use celery salt. So mm -hmm. besides just seasoning it like with salt, it's got a bit of that celery flavor in there, which is amazing when it comes to soups and stews. So bang oh. that on there, toss everything together. It goes into the oven for about 40 minutes and let it go. Right. Until that ends up like this. Super okay. roasted, super mushy. You can see some of that liquid has already come out. Okay. I'm what get what about out. this particularly makes it a banting soup? It's the fact that we're not adding any extra sugar. We 
using different cooking methods to, de to develop that ah, sweetness, right, the natural sugar in the right, soup. Right. So I'm going to get this all in a pot without messing, because mm -hmm. that'll be the first time ever. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Because normally the food just gets all over <laughs> this me. This is TV, Chana. All over I'm, you. Yeah, no mess here. I haven't learned that yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm using vegetable stock today. Okay. You won't need to, like I said, if your tomatoes are really ripe, mm -hmm. don't worry, you've got enough flavor in there. But as we said, ours are not really super ripe. So just a little bit of vegetable stock just to add that extra flavor in there. How much stock is that? Well, that's up to you. If you Ooh, you see what I'm talking about that mess? You At see your that? own discretion. <laughs> it is. If you prefer okay. a chunkier soup, you add less stock to it. Right. And obviously, if you, if you prefer more thinned out, a little more stock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're talking banting. You could totally add cream to this. Yeah. Make it a little more decadent. I'll probably add a lot of cream to it. <laughs> but again, oh, I'm going to start making a mess now. But because we have that extra little cheesy bit at the end, I'm not going to worry too much about adding extra, extra cream now. So using an immersion blender or any upright blender that you have at home, just start blending it. And again, if you prefer it super fine, blitz it all the way. All the if way. You want a bit coarse? It's yeah. up to you. Yeah. yeah. We like a bit rustic and you know. Yeah, you want another. Realism. There we go. So I rate that's enough then. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I think that's perfect. So what's going to happen is you just taste for seasoning always. It's very important when it comes to soups and stews. Taste for seasoning in between cooking from the beginning and at the end again. Mm -hmm. You don't want to add too much at one go because mm -hmm. then you know too much salt and you're done. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. add it in it's stages. It's just as bad as too much sugar. There we go. Okay. Um, and besides, it'll just completely <clears throat> spoil the dish for you. Yeah. So a um, little bit of chili will work really well in there if you want it to. Oh, yes. That's very true. I've got some parsley, but I'm going to add that in the end. I want to keep a little bit of freshness with our tomato soup, which I think soups and stews also really benefit from. A final sprinkling of something fresh. Yeah. And again, that's just like a little bit of dimension, a little bit of flavor. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. The recipe is on our, is on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and uh, the whole shopping list yeah. as well. Very excited to announce that Smeg is giving away a stunning retro stand mixer to the value of 7,499 Rand. And all you need to do is log on to www.privateproperty.co.za and enter as easy as that. What it is more, when you enter this competition, your name will automatically be placed in the draw for the grand prize of a new home for season three of Winner Home. The competition runs from today, the 23rd of May, 2016, and closes on Monday, the 6th of June, 2016. Only one entry is allowed per person, and T's and C's applying can be found on our website. After the break, we share the inspiring transformation story of Zintle and Chikilia. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, choosing to lead a healthier lifestyle is often easier said than done. Constantly being on the go and always craving that delicious extra helping at lunch, we tend to veer away from our plans. Ask me, I'm an expert of it. Our friends at NutriBullet want you or want to inspire viewers to take on the challenge and transform and of course, transformation, of course, um, of leading a healthy lifestyle. Today in the loft, we have health and fitness consult, a consultant and trainer, Zintle Nchikila, to tell us more about her personal journey of transformation and how she became the fit and fabulous and healthy person that she is today. Zintle, welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you for having me, Jenny. Now, you are my new fitspiration because, wow, this lady is remarkable. Why don't you tell us about your amazing transformation? Wow, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> uh, the beginning, when you, when you felt like, okay, things have got to change. It's after I had my second baby, mm -hmm. which is, she's four years old now. And I was just basically sick of being judged on how I look and uncomfortable. And the fact that I'm exactly the same age with my husband, just, I just felt like an aunt. But yeah. most importantly, when I wanted to do it for everyone else, it didn't work. Exactly. It just had to hit me. Yeah. And that's when it, I began, I was like, I'm, I'm tired of this. Yeah. And I think, um, I don't know, after the kids, I, d I don't know when, and then I went to the JNB Med, and I was insisting on this boob tube dress, and my mom's like, you in no size of wearing a boob tube dress. But you know when you're in denial, and it's only after I went there, and then I looked at the pictures, I'm like, how did it I get there? It wasn't you. Was it like you, you were in a different body? Yes. Different business body? How did I let myself? How yeah. did I get there? Because I was comfortable in my size 38, 40. I've never been a slim Skinny kind girl. of girl. And I was, okay, jeans. You know how you justify, um, I'm already this big, let me might as well. So yeah. I continued to eat. I continued, I hated gym with all my life. Really? My husband has always been a fit fanatic and 
I would just, I, was, I would not be bothered. And mm. if he goes to gym, I would get annoyed instead. And yeah. after that, I, it, it just had to hit me. And I yeah. thought, okay, I'm tired of this, let me change. And then that's when I decided, okay, what do I do? I've done it so many times, fell off the wagon. Like I, I, I lived on diets, like yeah. everything on the shelf. And I was like, okay, what do I do? Amazing. And then I started a journal and like, okay, what got me here? And then I wrote down everything that got me there and um, where do I wanna go? and write down my thoughts, how I conquered the first week, second week. Whenever that weak moment comes, I would go back to my journal. I would cry, literally cry between a craving. Like I, would, I wouldn't know how I got to you know, take away, drive through um, Kentucky. I would hold my, like my journal was with me 24 seven. It was a pocket, in, like I would, because I deprived myself of going out as well. Because mm. if, if I go out, I get tempted. But that's a lot of discipline. How it did was. you stay focused? Like, I, I'm, I'm just so determined. That but then journal think, is oh, creased. That. Yeah. Because it was me and the tears and the craving. Yeah. Like, who wins? I've, I've given up before. Am yeah. I going to do it again? Mm. What do, it's, it's, it's starting all over again. Yeah. So I just want to get back to you. You said that you were so unhappy with what you looked like. I want you to paint a picture for the audience of what you looked like. I was a whooping size 46. Yeah. G size bra yeah and wearing um weighing a hundred and six kilograms yeah so what we've seen now how much have you lost 50 k's 50 kilograms 50. you That's see this what is you why weigh. you're my hero <laughs> it's probably what you weigh so it's a whole new person and my mom would say you put your kids together they still don't give you 50 so yeah. you can imagine how you you look like yeah so it was it took me 18 months to yeah. lose all the weight and I've been at my goal now for just over two years. Yeah. And I think that's when, then that's when I started my Instagram yeah. because I needed to justify. Like You've I, got so many followers on Instagram. You've got like 65,000 followers or something yes. I checked. So it's all because it's, it's people meal ideas because that's what I thought. I yeah. thought diet was water, chicken breast, boiled chicken breast and yeah. that Greek salad we all hate. Oh, please tell me it's not that. So <laughs> I just said, okay, I must just find new ways. And exactly. I, never, I never knew that I could cook. Yeah. Like, well, what I love about your Instagram is that so many people now across the world are doing that Kayla Itzinus kind of um, diet in her fitness program. She's never been fit. Uh, she's never been fat in her entire life. She's a skinny young girl that's never had a fat day. So how can that be your inspiration? I think something like you, because you've been there and lost it all, is amazing. So nice. with your Instagram page, do you offer diets, uh, food suggestions, and exercise tips? Yes. I, I, I share almost my everyday meals. I share my gym check-ins, and as a mom, as a wife, when do you get the time? If the day has, if the day had 23 hours, you'd make use of that. Yeah. So I don't, um, I'm, I'm, I don't listen to the excuses that I cannot go to gym, I cannot eat healthy, yeah. I cannot pack food, I cannot, all those things. Yeah. So you make means. If you want to, you commit. If you yeah. want to eat healthy, you commit. Yeah. And then food ideas. And then what else? Everything. Like I yeah, share amazing. my lifestyle basically. <laughs> what do I eat when I go out? Exactly. I find alternatives at restaurants. I, I, um, I, I think I enjoy more of the food I cook now than going out. I'm coming I'm so over for dinner. <laughs> I cannot wait. You are definitely my new inspiration. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. through. I think you're going to be on the show. We're going to see a lot more of you. Yes. So why not you? Why don't you take on the challenge today of transforming your life? All you need to do is visit NutriBullet.co.za for inspiration and start that Nutri living today. In the upcoming weeks, we, along with NutriBullet, want to help inspire and motivate you. We have some really exciting tips coming your way and fascinating people to bring you. After the break, it's time for Win a Home on Afternoon Express. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Danilo Cristo. Make sure you tune in for Afternoon Express on the 31st of May, live at 4pm on SABC3. We're joined by a South African literary icon. Jake Simdau will be live in our loft and we'll be chatting to him about his journey to becoming one of the most celebrated writers in the history of our country with a body of work spanning almost four decades and novels which have been translated into 21 languages. We bring you the legends on Afternoon Express, weekdays at 4pm. Find it on 3.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Week two of Winner Home on Afternoon Express is here. The show where three talented young design contestants turn three empty apartments into dream homes at the Polo Village at Val de Vie Estate in the Cape Winelands. And the best part is that you, the viewer, stand a chance of winning one of the completed apartments valued at over three million rand. So far, we've met our three design contestants, Juan, Minente and Rudolf. We've met, we've met their three industry mentors, Sumin Brink from VZ Magazine, Belle Bellingham from Al Decoration, and Michelle Snadden from Real Estate Magazine. This week, we're all about inspiring our design contestants and you, the viewer, by bringing you some of South Africa's top experts in the field of decor and design. Today, we draw inspiration from one of the country's top design expos, Decorex. <laughs> The Cape's leading decor design and lifestyle exhibition, Decorex, once again was the destination of choice for those turning house into home and Winner Home set out to give the visitors a taste of what's to come. When you think of beautiful high design and home decor inspiration, you have to think of, well, Winner Home. It is no wonder that Winner Home and its sponsors had to have its very own stand here at Decorex in Cape Town, which is the home of design inspiration. We're going to take you on a journey of self-expression as we explore the best the country has to offer in terms of design and decor here at Decorex. The new Polo Village at Valdivie is where Winner Home is residing this year and the grand prize winner will enjoy a modern luxury lifestyle. You know, the stand here uh, this week at Decorex really represents what the Polo Village is all about and we wanted to create something that uh, the people can get a sense of, of uh, you know, the space um, and how to work with the space. And uh, my opinion is that they've done a great job with it. I'm very excited. I can't wait for the competition to start. And I'm very interested to see what the three design contestants also do and how they interpret not just the Polo Village, but the whole of all the V and how it comes out into uh, the different designs. People that enter, if they can win one of these, it will be a great investment as well. Caesar Stone has a reputation for eye-catching exhibitions and the 72 square meter collaboration stand was not to be missed. Caesar Stone is very well known for their court services, but also world renowned for their design exhibition spaces. What exactly is Caesar Stone before we discuss the beauty that is around us? Well, Caesar Stone is an engineered court surface. It's durable, it's scratch, stain, and crack resistant. It's just a wonderful material to have in your kitchen. And What's the collaboration going to be like between Caesar Stone and Winner Home? Well, Winner Home is a project that we're delighted to be involved with as a co-sponsor on Winner Home. It's a project that means a great deal to us. Designers are terribly important to us, and the emergence of young designers is something that we want to encourage. So the part that we'll be playing is to showcase our material, but also to help these designers get the very best out of their surfaces, and also to encourage them to look at other ways of using this material in other applications than just the kitchen. A key aspect of the show is highlighting trends and Plascon's forecast for the year is all about looking to the future with optimism. This stand is quintessential 2016 colour trend. Well, what we do is we travel a lot to find out what the latest colour trends are to international trend shows and things. And then we also use an international colour trend company and they meet twice a year to see what colours are coming through in different industries. So whether it's hospitality or fabric design and paint colour, and we all discuss the different colours coming through and then we decide on which colour trend stories are most important for paint and that's how we do our colour forecast. How has Plascon interpreted those colour trends for this year here today? What we've done is we've identified four key trend stories and that's what we've showcased on the stand. So each little stand is, consists of eight colours and it's a particular story and I'll take you through them. So the first story is where we are right now and that's the element theme and that is really inspired by natural landscapes. As you can see we've got a beautiful mural of a landscape here. It's inspired by earth colours but also rock and stones like we have a beautiful pink here and inspired by rose quartz for instance which also shows the fragility of earth. Our second story is inspired by space. You know we're all fascinated with what's happening in the universe. So it's some bright galactic colours. Our third story is heirloom. And in uncertain times, people find comfort in classic colours and, and things from our past, colours that have stood the test of time. And our fourth theme is connect, and it's inspired by the art movement. 
um, Memphis design, kinetic art movements, and also arts and craft. And it really is, I think, a backlash against all this cold minimalism and high tech and sleek stuff. And it's just about having fun with, with paint and color. An exciting addition to Decorex this year was an exhibition by self-taught fine artist Chizo Mangena, who created new works at the show. So I've seen a lot of trends through your artworks. I see you found your particular essence of what it is that you like to create. How do you go about finding your medium? And what is your advice to other young creatives who want to become a fine artist like yourself? I think one of the important things is one, remaining true to yourself. Uh, we all artists, but we all derive our inspiration from different places. And being true is the first thing that comes out of you stick with it and look at other ways of developing. The 100% Textiles Pavilion was a vibrant amalgamation of joyous textiles and bold photography. So I wanted to showcase um, contemporary African uh, textiles from places like Nigeria and Mali and South Africa. And I also wanted to showcase it with image makers, fashion designers, bloggers, fine art photographers, people who really are seeing things and showcasing them in a new and vibrant way. Designer and fine artist Adrian Lochner was awarded the Designer Spotlight Showcase for 2016 and dedicated his space to transitional eclectic style. So your background is in fine art, and I've always wanted to know the difference between fine art and design. Is there a difference? Right, many people think that art and design is the same thing, but there's a very distinct difference between the two. Design, for instance, is for a purpose. Someone will design a car, a interior, a chair, a dress, whatever. So there is a definite uh, end result, sort of, um, where art is something that you can't really um, pinpoint. It's an expression of the artist. It's, it's a story. It's something you want to, to express to the viewer. And every single viewer, of course, will also have a different interpretation of what the artist is trying to say. Winner Home has proved to be a wonderful learning and experimenting environment for artists and designers like former contestant Travis Hyde. It's so great to bump into a familiar face. Travis, hi, so good to see you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So I would have said to you that it's, it's hot, but I'm actually gonna to say to you it's piping hot. Uh, we were going for a bit of a steampunk look and they basically lend into that category perfectly with their piping bars and uh, shelving. So what opportunities have come out since uh, you are in Winter Home? Uh, well, Winter Home really opened my eyes to different interior design, arts, and different people's opinions of interior design and I definitely took those to heart and I've used them to, to my work that I've done at home and abroad. It's a great stepping stone and platform for young interior designers and architects to really get uh, real world practice that they can use and catapult their career in, into the big stream. With so much innovation and a true celebration of African spirit, exciting times lay ahead for the world of design and interiors. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on 3. Now, if you are planning a wedding, or if any of your friends or family or members are in the process, then listen up. Coming up this weekend from the 27th to the 29th of May at Monte Cassino in Johannesburg is the 2016 Bridal Fair, featuring international TV presenter, author, and wedding expert, Randy Finoli. This coming Thursday, the 26th of May, we'll also be chatting to Randy via video call on the show. So jot it down in your diary, and uh, don't be a bridezilla about it. We're gonna teach you everything that you need to know. Today, we are giving away a double set of tickets. All you need to do is SMS the keyword express, your name and city, to 33728. SMS is cost one round 50 T's and C's apply and can be found, of course, on afternoonexpress.co.za. I smell some cheese. Yeah, some cheese, <laughs> that's for sure. Welcome back to the grand finale it of is, it our is. soup. Okay. So what we're going to make now are little cheese biscuits, right? Cheese so you know biscuits. when you... Listen when you, to that, <laughs> cheese biscuits. Uh, that's what I'm going to call them, a cheese crackers or, you know. I love it, I love it. So yeah? traditionally when you have a tomato soup, you always serve it with a grilled cheese sandwich. Well, that's like how I know right. it. Just dunk yeah. it and get yeah. in there. Yeah. So, but we're doing the banting version, so we have to forget about the bread. But I don't want to like substitute the flavor or the texture. So what I've done is I've created these little guys. Wow. And all it really is, it's Parmesan cheese, and it's just been grated up, and then put into a pan, 
And what happens is they melt and they firm up as they cool. So the reason I ch went with um, Parmesan is because it's quite an intense cheese. It so tastes incredible. Oh, thank you. Them. It's just the cheese. I can't even take I the know, credit. I know. So it's quite an intense cheese, so you don't need that much cheese to get the flavor through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also what you'll notice is some of the fat actually renders out of the biscuit as it cooks. I don't know if the experts are kind of like a little happier with oh, that. Oh, wow. Wow. Like two drops of fat? It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay. So, so another thing is... We talk, do, we've spoken about umami before. Umami yes, you find have. in tomatoes and in parmesan. So what it does is just adds that extra like savory, like delicious flavor to the soup. So it doesn't feel like you're missing out on anything by having this extra bit of biscuit with it. So now remember earlier I said I don't, wouldn't really add any extra tomato paste to the soup? Right, Because this right. has a kind of that richness, that, that saltiness to it. By adding tomato paste, it's just like too much. Mm. So with this guy, you can either crumble it over or just like snack on it as you're doing. I love the color of the soup. I always thought like tomato soup had to look quite severe, like blood red. Oh, well, yeah, you don't need to. And sometimes I really feel like that's just when people really add that extra amount of tomato paste yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, if you're using a riper tomato, you're probably going to get a more intense red flavor. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's not about that. It's all the other ingredients that are in there all coming together to make an awesome soup. Okay, cool. So is our soup ready to be served? It is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you <clears throat> to take these to the table. Okay. Is it, I'm going to keep this one because I've got you guys the, okay, sorted on the table already. Do thing. Do you, boo. Okay. So, Wonderful. Um, wait, wait, wait. I've still got more tips. What? Okay, what, what? I just remember quickly, right quickly. now. Uh, no, so you go, you go, okay, sorry. Okay, come tell us, come tell us at the table. <laughs> sorry, Clem, no time for more tips. It's cheese time. <laughs> oh my goodness, this looks absolutely delicious. Banting friendly, everybody's allowed. Grab cheese fry, <laughs> cheese yeah, chip. Cheese. <laughs> yeah. Dairy this is absolutely good. Soup is so good though, but soup mm. is healthy for you. It's not just hidden calories, hey? Thank no, I think you. it's all about the ingredients. Yeah. If you get good quality sourced veggies, Mm. And you, you clean about the ingredients, then yeah, it's great, great for winter. Yeah. You're allowed to pass the cheese back. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Teasing, we're just getting funny by cheese. Thank you so much to all of our guests. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming through. Hope you enjoy, enjoy the soup. Hope you learned so much on the show today. And I, I trust that you enjoyed it. And, and, uh, we definitely did. Yeah. Until tomorrow, same time, same place. Good night and happy eating. Thank you. Ciao. Good night. Bye. 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 <laughs> Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we're joined by Hectic 99 presenter Lorian Nokia. We take a look at how students are raising funds for other students at UWC and when a home judge Simon Bray chats to us about estate living. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel-good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to us. Join the Afternoon Express family by subscribing to our channel right here. And we'll keep you up to date with all our recipes and, of course, our fabulous episodes. Also, feel free to leave a comment and share this video. We do love it when you express yourself.